Hey folks, we're gonna do a little bit of maintenance here on the Torquedo Ultralight 1103 and the 915 watt hour battery that comes with it. So I carry a kit with me always that has a spare prop, even if it is a little bit beat up and missing its tips. It's still a very valuable thing. Uh, I carry a soft bristle toothbrush to clean out my connections with the WD-40. I actually have a spare magnet here. So the WD-40 is critical for a well-functioning Torquedo system. Um, unlike the depth finder, which I did an inst a, uh, a maintenance video with the depth finder, where I use the dielectric grease, we do not use dielectric grease on the Torquedo terminals. We use WD-40, only WD-40. Uh, you're going to use that that spray nozzle to really blast it, aim it in there, and it just blasts all that dirt out of there. Um, I carry sometimes a spare skeg for the 403, even though I'm not running the 403 that often. Um, I already mentioned the spare um, magnetic key. I keep a spare um, data cable with me and some shear pins. And the most important thing that I carry, and I'm going to put this all down, is a 17 millimeter deep socket. So we're gonna use that to take the prop off. This particular motor I lent out to someone who's very hard on gear, Miss Christine Fisher. Uh, she had trouble with her motor at the Kayak Bass Fishing National Championship. And I said, we can look at this and mess with it. Um, but why don't you just take this and run with it? And she did, and she used it. And I have not opened this up, but I'm guessing that we find something in here behind the prop. Unless she has cleaned it out for me. No, nope, I guess she did. She's taken my advice and she is checking behind and really what you're looking for is right underneath that washer you'll have braided fishing line vegetation trot line anything any kind of stringy stuff gets caught in there so we've checked that that's in good shape we're going to get that back in there hey christine thanks for checking behind the prop when you borrowed my motor i would say if you don't check behind the prop it's about like running your vehicle, the truck you own now, with the oil that was in the engine when you bought it. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, not doing this is like driving a vehicle and never changing the oil. Before too long, it will destroy the motor. way that it destroys the motor is that braided fishing line sits on that waterproof seal where the shaft comes out and just spins and spins and abrades it and lets water in there and then it's fried so it's not a bad idea to every trip check behind the, the prop so I'm gonna check a couple other things on this I've noticed and this happens when you, you fish an area that has a lot of vegetation. I have the, the rock guard here from Innovative Sportsman. And it has somehow pushed its way up. It's gotten loose here. So, and I think that happens when you get a lot of vegetation that builds up on the grass cutter here. It's that little stainless blade. And it can get under it and just pile up and push it up. So, one thing that I'm going to do is get size allen key on there to open this up and slide it back down that is not the right size let's try 5 30 seconds that is correct all right so i'm loosening that as i'm doing that i'm looking at other things on here Looking at the motor lift, 
bar up top, see if it's in good shape. I think it is. Sometimes they get bent. And you gotta put them in a vise and bend them back. The steering triangle looks to be in good shape. We're gonna look at the, the plug as well. Where it connects to the battery. Tap that sucker back down. Alright. Yep. Prop is still clear in that grass cutting blade. And we will tighten this up. I will make note of the fact this is a prototype. This is the first one I ever used. This is one I tried to kill. And the in the warranty rate on this particular motor is exceptionally low. It does happen. Um, I know Eric Jackson killed one because <laughs> he ran it up, up through a class three rapid and ran it back down through and then it failed two weeks later and he wonders why. I don't know. I like a rock guard on mine. Um, there's been very few of these. I think I know of two the people that have broken them. Uh, I tried to break this one. If you look at the nose cone of this, you can tell I'm gonna bring it close. You can tell that I ran it a long time before I put the Innovative Sportsman rock guard on there. You can see how much of that is polished off there. And look at that nose cone, look at those gouges. It's a tough motor. Um, but the weakest part is if you get braided fishing line in, in behind there. Um, so I'm looking at, like I said, this is a prototype and it, it actually has the little connection there. Um, this was actually a travel motor pylon before it was a prototype ultralight. So I'm gonna look, look there. Is it dirty? Are we gonna have connection issues? The easiest way to get your E30 arrow code removed is uh, get you some WD-40. Get it in that little nozzle. So I got WD-40 and I got the little, I, I, I don't brush my teeth with this anymore. Actually, I never did. It was brand new. I bought it for this purpose. It's a soft bristle toothbrush. I'm going to take the spray nozzle here and just, I'm not, I'm not jamming it down in there because I don't want the tip of the thing to push over any of the, the, uh, the little pins. You bend those pins and you got to replace the, uh, you got to replace it. I'm also blasting in, in here to get any of the, any of the dirt and the sand from Pensacola Beach where I was with Brandon Barton with this setup out of there and it's it's running pretty good there so this is kind of held like a cup it's holding that WD-40 in there and I'm just very lightly going in little circles cleaning that out and I'll clean out around where the, uh, the threads are. And that is a happy connection. So the same thing that you did with the, the connection with the plug that fits into this part of the battery, you can do with the battery and your, your charging port and your data cable. So I'm gonna get the WD-40 back out and uh, blast all three of those and just give me a very quick uh, once over with the with the soft bristle toothbrush. These you can really kind of aim it down in those holes and blast it out. I may need a new thing of WD soon. All right. So the WD-40 really in those terminals just routinely prevents 
the water and salt water in particular from getting to them. This one's so important, the charging port. It has this little flap. As soon as you're done charging it, make sure that it's securely on there. People say, oh, but it pops off. Well, keep an eye on it. Because when it's open like this, and you're running your motor through the swamp, kicking up mud, dirt gets in there, you jam the plug in there to charge it, and it's running current through mud, problems, you get problems. I burnt a charger up because I had mud in there. So you can do this and occasionally come back through it. And you've loosened up the mud with the, uh, you know, with the toothbrush, and you're gonna blast it out with the pressurized, good stuff WD there. So that keeps your keeps your battery happy. And I will just make a quick note when you're charging it. That red light will blink red as it's taking a charge, and it'll go solid red when it's full. And you can't overcharge it, so it's a pretty good setup. Solid red means it's fully charged. Must have already topped this one off in the uh, hotel room. Blinking red means that it is taking a charge. So I'm gonna let this one sit and not worry about it because the charger will not overcharge the battery. It'll shut off automatically when it's full and that'll be designated by a solid red light. One last thing while that's charging that I will mention that I do, is I go to my photos, specific album for, come on, go to albums. Uh, for Torquedo Documents. And I go to that and I can always see these screen grabs of error codes that I just took a picture of from the, uh, the user manual. So when you get your Torquedo, do yourself a favor. I'm going to turn it that way so we can see what's on there. Take a picture because you may not be in a place where your cell phone can connect to the internet and retrieve these. They are posted online, but it's much nicer to have them right there on your phone so you can look up what is error code 05 or whatever it is. Get those on your phone and you'll always have them so that you can look it up when you need it.